starts today. Intel's 14th gen gets its first gaming benchmarks. AMD's RX 8900 XTX is the most insane GPU ever. Companies are buying up all the GPUs and bad news for Nvidia's RTX 5000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have some new benchmarks for Intel's 14th gen CPUs, including some gaming benchmarks. The story originally comes from a tech reviewer on Billy Billy before being taken down. Luckily, the information was shared by HXL before it was taken down, so we have just about everything we need. Starting things off, you'll notice that he called this CPU the 13700KS, but according to video cards, it's actually a sample of the 14700K that made it to the media outlet. He just just called it that to hide what the CPU actually is, though it obviously didn't seem to work. When it comes to the CPU, remember that the 14700K is one of the only chips for next gen to get an actual core count increase, and it looks to have really helped when it comes to multi-core performance. As you can see, in Cinebench R23, the 14700K got a single core score that's only 4.5% faster, but a multi-core score that's a very nice 14.3% faster. Then in CPU-Z, we see something similar in single core, but a very nice 20.7% increase in multi core, so those added cores and slightly higher clocks are clearly helping here. Unfortunately, when it comes to the games that were tested, there wasn't much of a difference, with the 13700K even beating it in a couple benchmarks. All in all, 14th gen Intel isn't looking all that impressive other than this one CPU. Next up for today, there's a wild story that actually shows what AMD was planning for their RX 8900 XTX GPU. But first, this is the perfect day for everyone to learn computer science with today's sponsor. Brilliant! Because right now, when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get a 30-day free trial to see how you like it. Of course, you know that I use it myself when I'm ready to learn something new about computers. Whether it's memory or their really awesome course on neural networks, which is used to make modern AI. They even have a course on Python, which is one of the main programming languages used in AI. And the best part is that they were built to teach the STEM field. Basically, they know their stuff. But it's not just what they teach, it's how they teach it. Because you learn with Brilliant by doing it yourself with their engaging and downright fun puzzles. But don't take my word for it, because like I said, when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial. So there's really no reason not to at least give them a try. Plus, when you're ready for more and you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Now back to the story, in a brand new video from Moore's Law is Dead, he shared a GPU diagram of what was called Navi 4C, which was actually leaked out a little while back by Kepler on Twitter. So this was the die for one of AMD's next-gen GPUs, more specifically the 8900 XTX. And as you can see, it's one absolute monster. In fact, you can see that even just here, it's divided up into a whopping 13 chiplets. Yeah, because it's just a 2D image, Moore's Law is Dead is pretty confident there's more elsewhere on the chip, up to a whopping 20 chiplets. You can see there's the package substrate, three active interposer dies, and each of those with three shader engine dies. So there's basically multiple GPUs combined into one. Then the I.O. die right here. Basically, this is one of the most complicated GPUs ever. At the very least, it's way more complicated than RDNA 3. And unfortunately, that's likely why rumors have been claiming that the chip is cancelled. Basically, this is why we've heard that AMD won't have high-end GPUs for their RX 8000 series cards. Don't forget that it takes years to design and fabricate graphics cards, so they almost certainly don't have time left to make anything else. And this was pretty clearly too complicated. Next up, it looks like companies are buying way more GPUs than before thanks to the new AI boom. In a new report from Reuters, they look at the wild amount of money being spent for AI over in China. Just recently, a report broke claiming that Baidu, ByteDance, Tencent, and Alibaba had bought a whopping billion dollars of A800 processors to be delivered this year. But now, according to this, the same companies have purchased an unbelievable $4 billion to be delivered in 2024. I literally have this in all caps because it's just unreal. We're talking $4 billion with a B in GPUs for AI. Now, these are obviously not gaming GPUs, but as we recently saw, companies are willing to purchase gaming cards for AI. Sure, they aren't as good at AI when compared to more specific 
AI-specific cards, but they're also quite a bit cheaper. And if companies can't get their hands on AI-specific hardware, gaming cards are the next best thing. Basically, while gaming GPUs are still available for now, I'm not very optimistic about the future. I guess time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, there's a really interesting story regarding NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 50 series GPUs. But if you ask me, the interesting part isn't what other outlets are reporting it as, and it actually ties back into my last story. This one was originally reported by Video Cards, who saw an interesting post by a leaker on the ChipL forums and confirmed by the well-known leaker copi 7 Kimmy. Basically, the report first confirms that codename Blackwell will apparently be used for both gaming GPUs and accelerators. Remember that as of right now, gaming cards use the Ada Lovelace architecture, while NVIDIA's AI accelerators use Hopper, so two separate architectures. But NextGen will apparently use the same architecture for both. Next, it gives us the names of the actual GPUs for their next-gen gaming cards. And as you can see, there are GB202, GB203, GB205, and GB207. Remember that the actual cards you buy, like the 4090 and 4080, are made from GPUs with code names like 8102, 8104, etc. And the big thing people are talking about is that this new series skips the 204 GPU for 205, so it's downgrading that GPU to a lesser number. But the real thing, I believe, is that that it's now a 200 moniker. If you've been following GPUs over the years, you know that NVIDIA's gaming GPUs typically start with a 1, like GA102, 8104, etc. You can see what I mean in this table. And initially, the RTX 50 series was rumored to have a 102, 104, etc. But all of a sudden, we're now talking 202, 203, 205. Well, according to Red Gaming Tech, these GPUs are smaller than the cards NVIDIA initially planned for the 500 series GPUs, meaning it's looking like they may have downgraded all of their cards. This could easily be in response to the rumors that AMD won't be releasing a high-end GPU for the 8000 series, but it could also be so NVIDIA can focus more on AI cards, which are the really big money makers for them right now. Oh, and Moore's Law is Dead has actually claimed that NVIDIA may forego their high-end GPU like AMD. Basically, next-gen could seriously be hampered by this AI gold rush. So while that does it for today, are you excited for NVIDIA and AMD's next-gen GPUs? Or do you think they'll just be too hard to find thanks to AI? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!